And Justin here today we are checking out play that funky music by Wild Cherry what an all-time classic guitar song this is it's got loads and loads of killer parts what I just showed you there was kind of a mixture of the two guitar parts in there but I'm going to show you what they both are but we're going to mainly focus on one guitar part which is a kind of a good one if you were playing one guitar in a band or you wanted to play it by yourself because uh, the two parts together of course you need two guitar players to do that so let's get to a close-up check out how to play this beast so I'm going to take you through it one riff at a time, and the first riff is the riff that you hear right at the beginning of the song, which is this. Okay, so we've got a little bit of palm mute there with the picking hand, just touching the string ever so slightly to... without it, a bit bright, just a little bit, just to mute it down a little bit, okay? So then we're going to be playing the thicker string twice, then the 7th fret on the 5th string, then the 5th fret, back to the 7th fret, then we're going to play the 5th fret on the thicker string and hammer on the 3rd finger into the 7th fret, and then we're going to play the 5th fret to the 7th fret on the 5th string, but we're going to pick it. So we got... Okay, and it's all going to take down picks except for that that second last note which is the fifth fret on the fifth string which will be up down okay so we've got down 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 hammer up down 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 hammer up down that little hammer on this note and then the up pick to the down pick is really what will make it sound kind of like the record. A lot of people play both as hammer-ons but it never kind of sits the same way you know you really want to be all down picks, hammer on, up down for that last note. Okay riff number two goes like this It's probably what most people hear as being the, the proper funky part in this song. It's a really cool little riff to play. So uh, we're starting off with an E9 chord. Now, uh, if you're not familiar with how to play an E9, you want to go and check out the whole dedicated lesson on uh, playing the E9 in a funk context that's part of my funk guitar course. I'm not going to go through all the details of that now, but uh, you're going to play the E9, you're going to do a down stroke and an up stroke on the E9, and then you've got two scratches. So just relaxing the E9 to get the muted hit. So down, up, mute, up. Okay, now we've got this really cool little which is actually an E7 chord uh, and it looks very similar to the E9 obviously but we're just relaxing that third finger so the thinnest two strings are muted. So we just end up having this 7th fret, 6th fret, 7th fret is what's sounding. Thinnest two strings are muted by the underneath of the third finger there. Okay, so we've got the E9 up, mute, up. Okay, this is just an E7. Make sure the mute of the, the thicker string too with the tip of the second finger. And then E flat and back to E7 again. E flat 7 that is. So it's the same shape. Okay, E9, mute, E7, E7, E7. Okay, all down picks. Okay, again, E9, 
E7, E flat 7, E7. So after this little dominant 7th movement here, we've got this F sharp 9, which will take an up, uh, an up strum, which is the last 16th note of beat 3, and then uh, we move that down one fret to an F9, which will be a down stroke on the offbeat, the and. Okay, let me just play that whole bar nice and slow so you can see what's going on. I'll do the count as well. So three E and a uh, four E and a uh, one E and a uh, two E and a uh, three E and a uh, four E and one E and a uh, two and three E and a uh, four E and one E and a uh, two and three E and a uh, four E and one E. And So one thing in case you hadn't noticed already is that we're going to get a few extra little clicks in there. So even though I'm telling you kind of the strict pattern is this. You can hear already it's really difficult to not get a few little extra hits in there, a few scratches. And that's cool, you know, because on the original recording there's plenty of those that just sneak in. So you end up with kind of... Okay, especially up here, you're going to get a few little scratches in there and that's fine. Don't accentuate them too much. They're, they're, they appear here and there on the record, but you know, don't uh, just let it happen. Go for doing it straight. Just aim for that and then you'll f probably find a lot of those scratches happen in the right places just by themselves. Now there is one variation that's actually happening here, which is a little slide up to the F sharp 9. Again, we're just, even though it's the whole chord, we're only focusing on that third finger. Those notes there, maybe, maybe the first finger as well, but mainly those notes are the ones that we're focused on. So we end up with this. You can see that the other two fingers are traveling along with it, keeping those strings muted, because we don't want it, if we just lift it up and go, we're going to end up getting all sorts of funny notes going on, but okay, so it's got to be seventh to ninth slide, okay? So up, slide, up, down. Otherwise, it's exactly the same riff. And I think what's happening, although it's kind of difficult to tell, it seems like it's alternating between the two. So you do it with the straight one first, the first time around, the second time, with the slide up to the F sharp nine. So we end up with this. So now into riff three, which is the little pre-chorus thing, they were dancing and singing bit, which is all just an E9 until right at the end. Uh, and we're doing this. Okay, so E9 chord, we're doing one E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a. And a two E and a three E and a four E and a one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one E and a two E. Okay, really important keeping that hand nice and relaxed, making sure that lifting the chord creates a mute. Okay, we're not having to mute it with the strumming hand. Just play, relax the chord shape, and that'll mute it. One E and a two E and a three E and a four E and. A. And a two E and a three E and a four E and a one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a and a two E and a three E and four and okay and the very last time we've got this step up going from the E F to F sharp nine which is going to G nine which is going to be the start of the fourth riff which is going to be the chorus okay so I'll just play that one more time so three four and they were dancing and singing. Move into the groove and, and just when it hit me, somebody turned around and shouted, play that. 
okay and that's where into the chorus which is going to be riff number four now riff number four is this <laughs> going on in this one uh, so let's start off we've got a G9 chord and the rhythm pattern is 1 E and a 2 and 3 E and 4 E okay again 1 E and a 2 and 3 E and 4 E okay 1 E and a 2 and 3 E and 4 E that's down, up, down, up, miss, down, miss, up, down, up. One E and a two and three E and four E. One E and a two and three E and four E and a one E and a two and three E and four E. One E and a two and three E and four E. such a great pattern now what's happening is it's again it's a two bar pattern but the second time round on the last two notes we have an A9 and an A flat 9 okay so we end up with this that, the rhythm of that as well sorry that's four and so we end up with this one E and a two and three E and four E and one E and a two and Three E and four and one E and a two and three E and four E. One E and a two and three E and four and Okay, so it does that twice. Uh, then it does one bar of the G9 and then we go to a B flat 9 now I must admit I always played it as a B flat 9 up here But having listened to it just now to do an accurate transcription for you guys. It is definitely a very cool B9 a B flat 9 Chord down here. This is the first finger in the fifth fret of the fifth string third finger in the sixth fret of the fourth string second finger in the fifth fret of the third string little finger in the sixth fret of the uh, second string Two outside strings are muted. Okay, that's a B flat nine chord, and the rhythm that's played on this is one E and a two E and a three E and a four. One E and a two E and a three E and a four. One E and a two E and a three E and a four. So that'll be down, up, down, up, 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 down, up, down. 1 E and a 2 E and a 3 E and a 4 1 E and a 2 E and a 3 E and a 4 1 E and a 2 E and a 3 E and a 4 Okay, so let me just play through that part up to the little uh, note line there It's a different thing altogether. So up to that point we're starting on the G9. We go 3, 4 We've got the riff. Okay, pretty simple kind of a pentatonic uh, bass thing. We got the ninth fret on the third string, then the seventh fret, then ninth fret on the fourth string, then seventh fret on the third string, then back to the fourth string, ninth fret, seventh fret. Okay, one, two, and three, four, and again, one, two, and three, four, and one, and two, and three, and four. Okay, so the second bar of the riff, nine, nine, seven, nine, seven, shift to five, then seven, five on the fifth string. Again, starting on the fourth string, nine, nine, seven, nine, seven, shift, seven on the fifth string, uh, fifth fret on the fifth string, my lord. Okay, the whole riff again. Three, four, one, two, and three, four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and. Okay, 
three, four. One, two, and three, four, and one, and two, and three, and four. Okay, so let me just play through that chorus one time, including that little riff, and then I'll talk about uh, some of these secondary parts you might like to check out. So again, three, four. Okay, so let's have a little bit of a chat about some of these other parts that are going on, the way that the two parts kind of link together. So the obvious one is right at the beginning where we've got this one guitar doing and the other guitar underneath going Okay, and those two parts work really well together. It's uh, definitely something you should be listening out for on the original recording. But uh, in the pre-chorus as well, when we've got uh, one guitar doing them Okay, the other one's going. Just seventh fret, fifth fret, and back to seventh fret. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and, and two and Okay, and then into the chorus, when the, the guitar is doing the that part, the guitar actually, uh, the, the original guitar, goes right down to the third fret there. He's actually playing the same as intro riff, but in G. So third fret on the thicker string, then fifth fret, third fret, fifth fret on the fourth string, third fret, fifth fret, hammer on on the fifth string, and then picking the notes third fret to fifth fret on the fourth string. So. So when the strumming guitar part goes to this uh, B-flat 9 chord, I'm not really hearing anything right on the beat, but I do hear a little happening on beat 3. Okay, a little bit unusual, but that you don't need to have guitar parts going all the time. Very often it's nice to have a bit of a bit of space. Or it could be going... I just can't hear that B-flat. That would kind of make sense to have one, two, three, four. Then he plays an E note when the riff starts. When that's going on, he plays an E note and then this B7 sharp 9 chord, which is 7th fret, 6th fret, 7th fret, 7th fret, just like an E9, but moved over onto the wrong strings. Okay, and just playing those four strings. It's actually the same as the Hendrix chord, but uh, with a six string root. It's the way that you play the Hendrix uh, chord with a six string root if you wanted to. So the second guitar part in the chorus will be this. Etc. So it's a really, it's kind of a subtle thing, but it works really, really great with the other guitar part. I really hope you're going to enjoy playing that funky music, White Boy. Uh, it's such a cool tune, this one. It really is a, a, an all-time guitar classic. Uh, if you're struggling with any of the techniques, you're not sure about the chords or how to do the hits and the scratches or side sliding or any of the stuff covered in this song, do go and check out the Funk Guitar course on the website, okay? The reason that I've done a course separate is so that when I'm teaching these sort of classic funk tunes, I don't have to go through and explain how to play each chord and how to do the mutes and the scratches each time. You know, for those of you that get with the program, you know, check out the course, you'll know how to do the techniques and you can focus on learning the tunes and uh, making sure again of course that you're counting it right that's really important uh, and of course the biggest deal when you're learning these tunes is playing along with the original recording and making sure you lock in with your timekeeping because that's really the the key thing there is playing along really making sure that you're sitting in the pocket like when you play and the the, the guitar on the record plays it's a, it, it exactly the same time you know locking into the groove is really a big deal in, in the funk genre so I uh, hope you have a lot of fun with it and I'll see you for plenty more lessons very soon you take care of yourselves bye bye